Uh, some of the stuff we had yesterday, I'll leave that up there. Um, we had that worksheet of 10 questions. Turned it in great. If you haven't, get it in soon. Uh, I'm just going to go over, not the worksheet. I'm not just going to sit up here and grade those 10. I'm just going to explain those three ways we divide up power and do that. Um, at the end of the reading, there was a page of notes. If you go and look at that, that'll be a lot of what I'm going over. Um, what this is, the way it works out is that it's trying to say, okay, no matter how we divide up power amongst the number of people. So we've done, you know, like the absolute monarch has one person in charge. Uh, 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 a totalitarian dictatorship has one person in charge, all the way to a direct democracy has 320 million people in charge. It doesn't matter how you, you know, divide up your number of people in charge. We also have to look at then once you get those number of people running the country, do they give all the power to the national government? Do they give all the power to the subdivision governments? Or do they let them share it? And so we need to look at that here too, because eventually we're going to have to answer the question, do we have a federal republic? That's on like a lot of the EOC test. It's on our test. So we need to make sure we know what a federal republic is. We've already done republic. Now we got to look at federal. So I've got this key up here. This is what we're going to be using to draw these diagrams as I'm explaining it. These diagrams end up on our next uh, test. So you'll want to make sure you pay attention to those. They are in those notes that you got yesterday. But this diagram will help you understand it. Here's a couple things just to help you if I start talking um, and you're not sure of something. I won't say the word state much when I'm trying to talk about the United States because... Our country, our national governments, the U.S., and then our state, our, our subdivision governments are called states. That's a problem because the word state actually means nation. So if you went to Canada and said, where are your states? Where's your state government? They might point at their national government and say, that's our state government because state means nation. We're the only people that kind of call our little subdivision states. In Canada, they call them provinces. Other areas of the world, they call them districts. They have other names for them. So we're just going to say that it's the national governments, the big one. And subdivisions, or I think the worksheet might have called them regional, are the, are the smaller ones that are parts of it, okay? So just keep that in mind. And I'm going to use my life as an example for a lot of these, and it'll relate somewhat to yours, and we'll try to explain it that way, and then we'll talk about why. The reason we have to know these is when we start talking about the history of our government, these three are all going to come into play, and we're going to talk about them quite a bit, and we'll have to go through them and know them then. So starting with the first one here, this was the first one you had on the worksheet. It's a unitary government. And this is the easiest one for you to remember if you just pay attention and, and remember one thing. The word una, okay, if you have a unicycle, how many wheels are on your bike? One, one right? We know that. You got a unicycle, you got one wheel, okay? If you have, if you play the game uno, okay, you yell uno when you have how many cards? One, one right? Okay? If you have Spanish class, uno means one. So the un here, it means one, okay? And so when we look at all these different governments, there's only one of these governments where one of these two has all the power, and it's this one here. In a unitary government, what you get is you get a strong national government. I got my solid line, meaning it's strong. So this is your national government, and it's gonna be strong. And then here's your little parts that make it up. Here's your subdivisions. And you can tell from my dotted lines here, I'm saying that they're weak. And the national government has all the power. They have big old arrows. I've got the arrows show power. They're big old arrows, and they only go one way. What this is, it says up here, this is what we had when we were a colony under England, okay? This is England's government, and England's government told our colonies what to do. Now, could our colonies make their own laws? Could they create their own taxes and stuff? Yes, they could, okay? But only because England allowed them to. If England had said, hey, we're not going to let you do that, we would have had to say sorry and stop, okay? This, to give you an example of how I said from my life, and this is from your life too, this is when you're a little kid, and you have mom and dad, and they tell you everything to do, or grandma and grandpa, aunt and uncle, whoever. They're going to tell you what to do. And even as you get older, you might have parents that are still constantly telling you what to do. You know, when you're a little kid, can I have a cookie? Yes or no. Can I cross the road? Yes or no. Can I go outside and play? Yes or no. You get older, hey, can I, can I you know, come home at midnight tonight? Yes or no. Can I do this? Can I do that? You know, they're going to tell you what to do. And sometimes, <laughs> does it get on your nerves? Yeah. It gets old sometimes to have parents constantly telling you what to do, Okay. This is the kind of government that's a unitary. The big boss man is telling the littler person what to do all the time. We eventually got sick of this. We break away. We're a colony under England. We don't like it, so we break away. Just like if you're thinking of like an example of you today, many of us when we turn 18 might go off to college. You might join the military. You might get a job, but a lot of times people move out. You're sick of having parents always there to tell you what to do. That just happens. Not everybody, but a lot of people. Okay, so I know in my life, when I was 
18, I said, I want to go to college as far away as possible. So I came to Mizzou. I lived in Michigan. I went 500 miles away, bless you, from mom and dad, because I wanted to be able to flip this. I didn't want a big boss person having all the power and telling me what I could do. I could make my own decisions. I could do my own things. But ultimately, if they didn't like it, they could stop me. I got sick of this. Okay, This is the kind of government a lot of times you see in uh, absolute monarchies, dictatorships. You're going to have the big boss telling all the people underneath them what they can do. They're going to have different people in government in different parts of the country taking on some of the power, but really, ultimately, it's only because they allow them to. Okay, Just to kind of backtrack here, we do have this in the United States. This is what our state governments do to cities. So if you also, if, if you ever think about this, the state of Missouri is this big, strong, national, or strong government, and this would be like the city of Union here, and then whatever other city you want to put, New Haven, I don't care, okay? But the state of Missouri is a unitary government because the city of Union only exists because we ask the state of Union, can we be a city? And they give us a piece of paper that says, okay, you can have, you got to have this much territory, this many people, you got to have these taxes, a post office, a police chief, you got to do all these things, and if you do them, you get to be Union. And so long as we do all of their rules, we get to be a city that kind of makes our own decisions and all that. But ultimately, the state of the state of Union, sorry, state of Missouri, could come in here and tell us we think you're doing a bad job. Your city is gone, and then we would just be an area of country between Beaufort and Washington, and we would there would be no city here. There'd just be a McDonald's in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so so that's how unitary government works. They're they're at the national level usually in your governments that have strong leaders. We used to have one when we were the colonies and England ruled over us. You can still find them in state government today. Missouri has it, and our cities have to follow our state, okay? But this is the first kind of government we need to know, okay? It's a strong national government that has all the power over its subdivisions. Like I said, if this is my life, this is me growing up in Michigan, I got sick of it. I didn't like parents telling me always what to do, just like we didn't like England always telling us what to do. So what do I do? I go to college. And I flip it. I do the complete opposite. Okay. Now my parents are 500 miles away. They're still the national government. They're the big government, but they're weak. Okay. They're a dotted line. Here's me down here, and here's other kids at Mizzou. And now we're strong. We're the subdivisions. We're the we're the the kids. But now we've got the power. My parents in high school could say, hey, you got to study tonight for that test you got tomorrow. Hey, you got to fill out this application for a job. Hey, you need to go to bed at, at 11.30 so you can wake up and get to school. Now when I'm in college, you know, hey, my parents can call me on the phone and say, hey, get to bed by 11.30. And I can say, okay, and I can go out to the bars all night. Okay? My parents could say, hey, did you fill out that application? And I say, no, I don't really want a job while I'm here. I just want to hang out. My parents could say, hey, you know, did you uh, wake up today and go to class? And I say, no, I slept in and skipped three of them. Okay? I can make my own decisions. I'm the strong one now because I'm far away. I've decided that I'm the boss. Ultimately, they still have some power. They could drive to Missouri and grab me by the back of the head and drag me home, or they could cut off money or something like that. But really, I now have the power. The other kids at Mizzou have the power because we're the ones waking up, going to class, studying, all that. We've got some power. Okay. This is what happens in what's called a confederate government. In a confederate government, all of the little subdivisions are strong. They make all their own decisions. They make all their own rules. And the national government is only there to keep them together enough to like fight a war. When we're the Confederates, uh, when we're the uh, uh, Articles of Confederation in America, we have our states fighting against England. The only reason we had a national government was to keep them all together fighting against England. Okay. When the South broke away in the Civil War, all of the states wanted to make their own rules. And the only thing the Confederacy was was really to keep all those states together fighting against the North and Abe Lincoln. Okay? Confederate governments, weak governments, strong down here. Okay? I gave you my example of me. Okay? I would stay up as late as I wanted. I would go out whenever I wanted. I would skip classes and sleep in. Guess what happened? Mizzou sent me a nice little letter that said, you might not want to go to school here anymore. You're doing really bad. And I said, yikes, I need to get my head out of my backside. Okay? Confederate governments stink, okay? My life at Mizzou, I thought I was having fun, but I was failing life, okay? I was getting bad grades and doing stupid stuff. So this is bad. You have to kind of have somebody in charge telling you what to do, making sure that you're not an idiot. In a Confederate government, the subdivisions have the power. They need a boss to kind of keep them going the right direction. This government does not work. There are none of these in the world today. No national government has this because you have to have a strong big government to keep everybody in line, okay?
This does not work. Just like my life at Mizzou was not working, I had to fix it, okay? I couldn't do this government. So here's the two kinds of governments that existed back when we broke away from England in the 1770s, okay? You could be a country where you had a strong national government that had all the power and told you what to do. We didn't like that. We didn't like the king being bossy. Or you could have where the state governments, the subdivisions had all the power and just were held together loosely to fight. That didn't work. It was too much chaos. Too many people doing their own thing. It didn't work.